Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, welcome at the Diplomatic Academy for uh, this afternoon's e event, uh, which is, uh, has its main organizer, the IES. Uh, please welcome with me uh, the Finnish Minister of Foreign Affairs, Elina Waldtoven. Uh, and as uh, President of IES, uh, please welcome also Werner Fasselabend. Um, it's not something new that we are doing this afternoon. We have a, a new speaker, but we have an old subject. Our subject is how can we make secure the European continent in this given moment? Uh, and uh, I think it's an excellent idea to ask those who have taken decisions, like Finland has taken a decision. Uh, and uh, Finland has, it's now more than a year, made the decision in parliament, by government, in parliament, supported by the president uh, and supported by a majority of the Finnish population uh, to apply for membership of NATO uh, and has got the membership of NATO. Uh, and I would say practically in a, in a very typical Scandinavian way, they took along the Swedes. Uh, normally the Swedes did it with the Finnish, but this time it was the other way around. It's always been this way around. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, we have a lot of ambassadors here, <laughs> Madam Minister. <laughs> uh, uh, so it, this is, uh, I think the best to hear is from the, from the horse's mouth. Uh, why this was done, why this was, was, was necessary. And uh, the minister uh, is from a party which had been campaigning for membership of NATO for a long time. I understand uh, 16 years, uh, but there was no majority. But this has changed. Uh, and uh, uh, Finland is maybe also for us, uh, for us poor rest of Europe, which is not yet member uh, of NATO, uh, something to learn from. The military spending is more than 2%. The uh, opinion polls tell us that 83% of the population is ready to defend military its country. Mm -hmm. I don't have to mention what the figures are in Austria about readiness to defend our country. Uh, and you have about 900,000 reserve soldiers with a compulsory training. In Austria, we don't even can agree in government that we will have two months of compulsory training for our reserve soldiers. Werner Fasslab knows better than I what I'm talking about. Uh, but this is already politics, mm. and unfortunately, European security policy is decided by national governments, mm. uh, and they have to be elected, they want to be elected. So uh, I think uh, it will be for us very important to, to hear how uh, your way from non-aligned to NATO was possible, whether what the shock of the Russian war of aggression really meant for a country like you, and possibly also whether you see the difference between the situation of a country like Austria and a country like, like Finland. Uh, maybe we don't have to feel such a poor island in the middle of Europe anymore. Uh, but if, uh, if uh, we see a way to cooperate in the European security uh, structure, and from my side, we will have to work. We look forward already to Helsinki celebrations. I hope it will be celebrations when it's with you. It so will too. be very difficult, uh, but we, we are ready to support it also by, by events here in, in Vienna, Austria, uh, as much as we can. Uh, so welcome again, Minister Waltonen, and I give the floor uh, to our moderator. Okay. Thank you. So, first of all, I also want to heartily welcome you, Mrs. Minister. It's a great pleasure to have you here. Uh, I have to say that Mrs. Minister had an outstanding career that is not usual uh, for every minister. She served, uh, no, she studied not only in the traditional uh, fields for politicians, but she also had made a technology study and uh, financial studies and also worked almost 10 years in London and in Copenhagen uh, in financial services. She is an excellent German speaker because part of her childhood she spent in Germany, but we decided uh, to 
have this event in English lang language so all the international guests can follow. And there are quite some people also following by live stream, which I also want to welcome heartily. Only the keynote speech uh, will be transferred uh, live stream, and then questions and answers will be uh, just by, uh, by Chatham House role, uh, and of course in a limited time. So far, I have to say, you know, in Austria we've followed Finnish politics for quite some time. Because most of the time of the Cold uh, War period, Austria, Sweden and Finland belonged to the group of uh, neutral countries in between, and of course, there were so many links uh, and contacts we did have uh, all this time. And then, of course, with the end of the Cold War, this changed. Uh, Austria was for quite some time a front runner, uh, but then it changed, and it was Finland and Sweden first uh, that also changed the name of a neutral country to a non-aligned country. Uh, whereas Austria kept this notion of neutrality because this is part of our constitution and therefore also could not be changed uh, politically by any means. And you can imagine that, uh, of course, this war in Ukraine uh, did not only change the situation and the political discussion uh, in, in the high north of Europe, but also in central Europe, and I have to say that we followed your discussion, your decision-making in, in the government with highest interest, with respect, and I have to say, at least for my person, with highest admiration. The clearness of the way uh, you went certainly was quite impressive. Okay, this is the uh, situation we are in, and now, I just want to ask you in order to give us your keynote speech because everybody really is interested. Where does Finland stay? Uh, where does it stand? Uh, how do you see the developments? How do you see the consequences of your decision? Which advice, if you want to give us one, uh, will you give us? Please, Mrs. Minister, uh, it's, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, apparently the mic works. Good to be here. It's a great honor for me to be here in Vienna and at the Austria Institute for European and Security Policy. With Finland's NATO accession, a new era has begun in Finland's foreign and security policy. In addition, a new era has also begun in the history of Europe. February 24, 2022 is a date which will live in infamy in European history. On that day, Russia launched its full-scale war on Ukraine, a brutal war of aggression that was as much unprovoked as it was and still is unjustified. The people of Ukraine is, is bravely fighting for their freedom. Putin's war is a blatant violation of international law, including the Charter of the United Nations. Russia also attacked the very fundamentals of the European security order and the commonly agreed principles of cooperative security. Principles that Russia itself had negotiated and agreed upon over the course of several decades. Today, I would like to look back at the situation right before the war started and on how the war eventually influenced Finland's decision to become a member of NATO. The situation in Ukraine had, of course, started to deteriorate already long before 2022. Eight years earlier, on the 20th February 2014, Russia began the annexation of Crimea and took control of parts of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions of eastern Ukraine. And back in 2008, Russia invaded Georgia. So when Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 22, 
It was the third time in 15 years when Putin's Russia attacked a neighboring country, violating the sovereignty and territorial integrity of these countries. This, of course, was a wake-up call for a country like Finland, which shares a 1,340 kilometer border with Russia, and that has its own experience of Russia's or Russian inv invasions. We understand all too well what an invasion means. In Finland, we quickly needed to reassess both our security environment and consequent, consequently our security arrangements. The conclusion was quite clear, both for the general public and for the political leadership. The security environment of Finland had changed fundamentally and irrevocably. For Finland, the threat posed by Russia's aggressive behavior was an existential issue. Dear friends, a key element of the security order is that every state has the right to choose its own security arrangements. In the Charter of Paris, which dates back to 1990, the signatory states, I quote, fully recognize the freedom of states to choose their own security arrangements. A similar paragraph can also be found in the Helsinki Final Act, dating back to 1975. A key document well known here in Vienna, the host city of the OSCE. In December 2021, President Putin presented a list of demands aiming at, a changing, or aiming at changing these fundamental structures of European security. Russia's list of demands included that NATO and the United States refrain from further NATO enlargement, a ban on the establishment of military bases in the former Soviet territory, as well as a ban on the deployment of weapon systems in NATO member states that joined NATO after 1997. Putin also demanded an end to all Western military activity near Russia demands in stark contradiction with the sovereignty of the states and with the above mentioned freedom of states to choose their own security arrangements. Demands for buffers were in Putin's playbook as if this were a board game. In Finland, Russian demands were an immediate cause for alarm. And I'm saying this is three months prior to Russia's full-scale invasion of uh, Ukraine. In hindsight, one could say that they were an early game-changer in our security poli policy analysis. For many years, various Finnish governments had included a re reference to the possibility of applying for NATO membership. But the public debate on NATO accession was not very active. There wasn't any debate, really. According to opinion polls, only 24% of the population were in favor of NATO accession in October 2021, 24%. That analysis changed practically overnight with the turn of the events. Public support for NATO skyrocketed immediately after the Russian invasion of Ukraine. In an opinion poll conducted during the first days of the Russian invasion, a majority of Finns already, 53%, supported Finland joining NATO. In May 2022, the support had risen to 76%. Finland's decision to apply for NATO membership was a direct reaction to Russia's full-scale war against Ukraine. On its part, the government submitted two white papers to Parliament assessing the dr drastic change of our security environment. Through in-depth discussions in the parliament, a broad parliamentary support across all party lines was formed for Finland's membership in NATO. Eventually, on May 17, 2022, the Finnish parliament voted with an overwhelming majority, 188 MPs out of 200, in, in favor of our NATO membership. Indeed, <clears throat> and this has to be noted, it was the Finnish people who decided Finland should apply for membership, not the politicians. With NATO approval rates shooting up from 20% to over 80% where we are now, it is a classbook example of how NATO expands 
not by force, but because the free people in democratic nations choose to join. Not to threaten anybody, but to contribute to the own safety and obviously to that of others. A major factor in determining the timing of the Finnish membership process was the development of the political discussion in our neighboring country, Sweden. Sweden is and had been our closest partner in security policy and there were multiple benefits in taking the step together. The later adopted catch, catchphrase, hand in hand with Sweden, sums up the Finnish attitude towards the membership process very well. There were numerous cons consultations between our two countries during the spring of 2022. In Helsinki on May 17, both countries were ready to declare their aspiration to join NATO. The signing of Finland's accession protocol to NATO took place on July 7, 2022, and on April 4, 2023, Finland joined the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. By joining NATO, Finland has become a militarily allied country. Finland, Finland's and soon Sweden's NATO memberships strengthen stability and security throughout the Baltic Sea region in Northern Europe and in Europe as a whole. NATO is a stabilizing actor in Europe. Once Sweden joins NATO, all of the Nordic countries will be NATO members. Finland's strong defense capabilities and resilience to crisis will also strengthen NATO and the collective defense of the entire alliance. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking here in Austria, it might be appropriate to say a few words about Finland and neutrality. The first point I would like to make is that in Finland, we haven't considered ourselves as neutral since we joined the European Union in 1995. The EU, as you all know, has its own mutual defense clause. Article 42.7 of the Treaty on the, on the European Union. Therefore, we called ourselves a militarily non-aligned country before joining NATO, even though we had been very closely cooperating with NATO for years and decades, and especially um, deepening our cooperation in the past decade. Secondly, each neutral country in Europe has, of course, its own reasons for being a neutral state. Some have neutrality mentioned in their constitution, like Malta and Austria. Others, like Sweden and Switzerland, have had centuries-long tradition of being neutral states. One could argue that Finland, or for Finland, neutrality was more a tool for maximizing our room for maneuvering, bearing in mind our great neighbor to the east, and perhaps less a question related to our national identity. That might have been the reason for the very rapid change in public opinion on NATO membership that I referred to earlier. But I would also like to stress that strengthening our cooperation in security and defense matters is vital also within the European Union, whether we are NATO members or consider ourselves neutral. With Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine, Strengthening our common European security capabilities has become a generational challenge for us all. There are very few restraints for Russia's aggressive behavior. We see that Russia will remain a threat for global security for the foreseeable future. We need the EU to play a strong role in security and defense matters. Ladies and gentlemen, Every country seeks to maximize its own security. The main goals of Finland's foreign and security policy are to safeguard Finland's independence and territorial integrity, to avoid becoming involved in a military conflict and to improve the security and well-being of the people of Finland. NATO membership marked a fundamental change in our security policy, but it is also a natural step in Finland's gradual integration to Western institutions. We joined the Nordic Council in 1955, the OECD in 1969, 
the Council of Europe in 1989, the EU in 1995, the Euro in 1999, and then NATO in 2023. It is also important to underline that the basis of Finland's foreign and security policy has not changed. It continues to be based on the rule of law, human rights, equality, and democracy. The EU continues to be the essential foreign and security policy framework for Finland. <coughs> Dear friends, speaking to you in, in beautiful Vienna, I want to confirm Finland's continued and strong support for the OSCE and the concept of cooperative security. We believe in diplomacy and in cooperation as a way to increase security and stability in Europe, even if the focus now is more on building deterrence and defense against the aggressor. Finland is getting ready to chair the OSCE next year. We thank Austria as host country and as a steadfast supporter of the OSCE for your contributions and support to keep the OSCE running and functioning in these difficult circumstances. With the election of Malta as chair of the OSCE, the organization strives as much as it can to safeguard and strengthen the collectively agreed principles and commitments that are the basis of the security in Europe. These commitments and principles continue to be vitally important despite the fact that Russia is violating them. We will continue our work together with Austria and the European Union, the OSCE, the UN and elsewhere in order to support Ukraine and to contribute to international peace and prosperity. Thank you so much for your attention. I look forward to our discussion. Thank you. Yes.